Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Virtual Trends. Um, I'd like to start off by saying thank you very much to Henry Schein for hosting us on this webinar. Um, the Virtual Trends is, is a guide to building the ultimate integrated dental office. Um, it's going to be about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, there aren't any CE credits for this. Um, and at the end, there will be a Q&A with our um, panelists. On the chat, we have uh, Stefan LeDuc, who is our product manager um, at Dentsply Serona for the treatment center division. And he can answer questions as the presentation is going through. Um, uh, it's at the end, you will receive a copy of the recording um, as well as a copy of the presentation. So, I wanted to start off by introducing uh, the two dentists that are on here with me. So uh, speaking after me will be um, Dr. Amy Wen. Um, she is a graduate of uh, UOP. She's also part-time faculty there. Um, believe it or not, she somehow has the time to volunteer on the weekends at uh, mobile dental clinics for um, underserved and um, she has actually uh, owns two dental practices, so tons of business and uh, clinical, clinical experience with her. Um, also, uh, our other speaker, Dr. T. Huang, is uh, also a graduate of UOP, um, and she is a radiology faculty member there, and um, she is a mom and an accomplished foodie uh, on top of all that stuff. Um, again, I don't know how she has time for all this, she has actually owned three different dental practices and has built two from scratch. Um, I meet a lot of dentists out there, and I don't know too many that have built two from, the, from scratch. So some great experience here. Um, I am Matt Ehrenstrom. I'm a territory manager uh, with Densply Serona. I cover most of the West Coast, um, kind of from uh, Montana over all the way up to Alaska, down to California. Um, I have three daughters. And my dog is definitely not that big anymore. He's about 65 pounds now. I love to mountain bike. Um, I do uh, endurance races. This summer, I just finished a 100-mile um, endurance race in Bend, Oregon. So a little bit about me. Um, professionally, I have worked on um, somewhere around 150 projects now. And kind of what we do from the Densply Serena team, um, me as well as my colleagues, we work with um, Henry Schein, some of the best designers in the world, um, and we help organize your spaces. We help um, in some cases with design selections, cabinetry design, um, and we offer um, services from floor planning to as your organization, um, we can design everything from us all the way to the dental lab and everything in between. Um, so these are just some of my favorites uh, over the years that I've worked on. So when we think about designing a new practice or remodeling a practice, this is one of the first things that, that everyone is striving for. So the goal is to create this aesthetic environment that I think reflects the local community, but it also reflects the um, practitioner's uh, style of practicing, be it uh, high technology, which is typically the case for these offices. Um, and it just sort of brings everything up to date. It, it has a clean appearance, a safe environment. And um, really, when we design these practices and we all work together to create these the basically the patient's comfort and experience is first. So we're gonna uh, hear a lot about that today. The second thing is we wanna make you more efficient in your clinical workflow. And that really starts with your hand pieces. And um, when you pick up the camera, what happens? And for example, on this unit, when you pick up the camera, you get a live image right in front of the patient. You don't have to turn around and click a mouse and keyboard or anything like that. So there's a lot of little things that we can do to help make the practice more efficient. You're gonna hear more about that today. Um, obviously sterilization, infection prevention are major, major topics in the dental industry right now. And we're gonna cover a lot of details on that. 
But overall, if you can be more efficient, your patients like this, bottom line likes this, and um, we can help you do it. So um, the other goal that we have when we're setting up this patient experience is how can we educate patients better? Um, what's really cool about working at Densply Serona is we have all kinds of different uh, technologies, be it CERAC, 3D, intraoral imaging, we make our own intraoral cameras. All of these technologies help the dentist get the trust of the patient. They help streamline the experience. They help um, you know, integrate different technologies and push the um, procedural boundaries. The other goal, uh, especially uh, right now, there's more intense focus on this, but at Densply Serona, we've kind of always been focusing on this from the beginning, but that's a safe environment. So we have features built into our, um, our treatment centers, which is uh, digital dental equipment, uh, the chair specifically, and they automatically sanitize the water lines. Um, we have seamless, easy to clean surfaces on cabinetry equipment, and we have CDC guidelines are actually baked into our equipment and they're automated for, for the dentist and the team. The other thing technology does is it opens a lot of doors to new procedures. And you'll hear a lot about this as the presentation goes on, but we can enable different integrations from treatment centers to CERAC to 3D to our intraoral imaging. And this can make it uh, much safer, easier, faster, predictable to do implants, endo, oral surgery, orthodontics, um, and all of these uh, different topics. So what happens when you integrate these different technologies is, is pretty cool. The forward thinking dentists uh, tend to be doing somewhat billing around 120 different procedures a year when they add things like implants, endo, clear aligners, oral surgery, um, things like this. And uh, at Densply Serona, we have all the different technologies that enable these things. So obviously what that does is it also helps with the bottom line of the practice. Um, this is from the ADA and the, I think everybody's heard the number of around $514 is about an hour worth of production from a general dentist, where a specialist is more around $1,700 per hour. Um, if we can utilize technology to safely and efficiently move clinicians from, from the 500 to the 1700 um, range, this uh, dramatically impacts the profitability in the practice. It also enhances the patient experience because they want to stay with their main providers as much as possible. Um, the other thing digital dentistry does, and I'm sure you'll hear a lot from, from the two doctors that we have on with us today, is case acceptance goes up. When you can show them a 3D image of what's going on, when you can show them an intraoral scan from the CERAC, and you can do it all on the touchscreen integrated on the treatment center with the monitor right in front of the patient. It becomes the seamless communication that you don't have to think about. You don't have to turn around and get a mouse or run and get an iPad. You can play um, educational videos to the patient. You can show them their clinical data all from the touchscreen on the treatment center. So this is not only more efficient, but it's also more effective and more predictable way to communicate with patients. Um, and so this is a, a case study that is showing just the growth. This is a case study from an office in California, um, different from doctors that you have on here. And what you see here is in 2016, when they uh, opened a new uh, practice, they, before that they were averaging around 22 new patients a month. Since that time, uh, 2019, they ended with 60 new patients per month. And this is utilizing all these technologies from CERAC to 3D to treatment centers, as well as the design and the experience that created is attracting new patients. One of the ways that I, I have a lot of fun on this is if you go to the Yelp page of these practices, uh, it, it never fails. When I go look at the Yelp page, patients are feeling the technology, they're feeling the design, they know that they're in a cleaner, safer practice. And it's pretty amazing to see what happens. Um, you see their production is up over 3 million. Um, 
and I just got a message from this particular dentist uh, whose data this is from, and they had 112 new patients last month, and this is in an 11 operatory practice. So it's really, really rewarding to see what happens when you can implement all these things. Uh, uh, just a rule of thumb guideline uh, for all the dentists that are on here thinking if maybe it's the time to expand, maybe uh, it's not. But here's just a couple rules of thumb that I've found in conversations with a lot of the dentists uh, that it may be time to start thinking about expansion. When you start creeping over a million dollars in production for your average five to six operatory clinic, um, when you have 2,000 active patients, that's also a, a good trigger to look for. If you can fill two columns of hygiene um, four days a week, that's also a good trigger. The other thing that often triggers the need to expand is implementing new technology. So a lot of times if you implement uh, 3D imaging, for example, you typically will see a boost in production and um, attraction of new patients. And you may start thinking after you implement this technology, you may wanna have a plan for expansion. Um, new patients, uh, you saw in the last example around 20 new patients a month, which again, that's relative based on uh, demographics. But if that number is flat, uh, we want to be growing that and, and pushing that forward. So that's typically uh, another reason that it may be telling you that um, your facility is becoming outdated. Uh, patients want to see technology, especially now. Patients want to see a clean environment that is doing something um, with aerosols and infection prevention. So um, also, if your new patient appointments are out past two months, that's uh, definitely a time to start thinking. Um, the big one that I see most often is if you have a lease coming up in two years, don't wait until six months before that lease is up because then you're going to be in trouble and you're not going to be able to create and implement all of these things that, that you want to do and do it in a way that um, is, is most productive. So when we take um, this people-oriented design and we add um, digital innovation, it's amazing um, to see what the potential is. Diving in a little bit more on that design, I just have a simple uh, drawing I did here in AutoCAD. And um, it's kind of the three traditional ways that you can design dental operatories. So at the bottom, you have the traditional open bay, which is where you have a roughly two foot wide center island cabinet and you have the chair and then possibly another side cabinet on the end. Um, this I would call open bay. Then in the, the middle column, you have the dual entry operatory. So you have one entry for the doctor, one entry for the assistant. Typically you have to have side cabinets in this scenario because the 12 o'clock cabinet is only about 40 inches wide. So you can't fit the tubs and cassettes and things that are needed for, for that workflow. And on the top, you see single entry. Um, single entry is um, becoming the trend now. I would say more than 90% of the new offices that I see are going single entry. And there's several reasons for that. If you look at, compare these three drawings, uh, first off, you'll notice we were able to fit seven operatories in the same amount of space that you could fit six conventional operatories. So it's more efficient space-wise, but we also don't want to create tiny little boxes that you can't work in and that patients feel claustrophobic in and your team can't move around the patient. So single entry actually does the opposite. Even though the ops are, you know, in this case, somewhere around nine feet wide, um, there's a lot more clear space on the doctor side and the assistant side. So it creates this open feeling um, you can also work easily at the 12 o'clock because of the way the cabinetry and the assistant work surfaces are designed that can completely swing out of the way. And the, the biggest pushback I typically hear when people are considering these different designs is, well, the assistant needs an escape route. And that's true. Uh, I would argue, ideally, we don't want the assistant running in and out as much as possible, but there's always the times where they do. And as long as the operatory is planned correctly, they can easily get out behind the dentist because of this flexible work surface um, at the back. So 
this, this is uh, one of the design trends that um, you should really keep your eye on. You can fit more operatories. You can have better um, patient privacy. You can also have um, uh, better uh, experience from the standpoint of sound and hearing other patients and seeing other patients. The doctor can focus better. And the topic of the day, you can control aerosols much easier in a single entry operatory. So when you think about the center island cabinet uh, example across the bottom, I uh, was reading the news the other day and I came across this study uh, on uh, CNN and it was done at the VTT Technical Research Center in Finland and it's actually a grocery store. But when I saw this, I thought, wow, that's kind of like roughly the same size as a center island cabinet. And I was kind of curious in this study, what, what does happen if someone sneezes or coughs in a grocery store, let alone in a dental office where they sneeze or cough or using their hand piece um, on a patient. And this little um, animation shows what happens when someone sneezes or coughs in a grocery store. So that single uh, entry philosophy, it really helps control um, these aerosols in the dental environment. Uh, so a little bit more on what a treatment center is. I wanted to just put one slide in here on this topic because a lot of people don't know exactly what that is, but it's digital dental equipment. Um, it's maybe somewhat new in the U.S., about five or six years old here in the U.S. However, we've been doing this around the world since the late 1800s, and um, the name in Densply Serona that uh, comes from Serona is actually from that 1956, the very first treatment center um, called the Serona. And that's actually where the name uh, Serona comes from in the Densply Serona name. Um, since then, you can see somewhere around the 80s, our treatment center units became digital. And when they became digital, it allowed us to automate a lot of things that allowed us to integrate implant motors and endo motors and apex locators and all the clinical tools to put everything you need right at your fingertips to create the seamless treatment and the seamless patient communication. So um, the other thing that Densply Serona we can offer you is this roadmap. A lot of dentists that I meet with, they don't know exactly what the roadmap is to build the ultimate dental office. So um, we have this, uh, it's an entire presentation that we don't have time for today, but these are the different um, steps. So you kind of start off just creating a business plan. Typically um, involves your accountant, your, um, your business managers. Then you start to think about your, your project. What's the scope of the project? What's the schedule? What's the timeline you want to finish on? And this is really critical if you think back to what I said earlier about if you have a lease coming up in two years, now is the time to start planning and start thinking about these steps one, two, and maybe even three. So step three is, the, is kind of the loan approval and figuring out are you leasing, are you buying, um, you know, all of those different factors. And then you start really putting things on paper with the design plan. You start um, space planning. And in this time, you really need to consider what the workflow is for say sterilization or your digital workflow. How are x-rays getting to the patients? How are you gonna communicate with patients? These are all considerations that you have to implement in the floor plan. Um, a lot of times it's too late if someone hires an architect that maybe doesn't have a ton of dental experience and doesn't understand what, for example, Dr. Hong is gonna talk about later, the three-sided sterilization. Um, so those things need to be planned early on. Then you select your equipment, your interior design, you submit your purchase orders for the equipment, and then you start building. Um, it doesn't stop there though. While the build out is happening, um, I highly recommend um, starting to market. Um, one of the things uh, Dr. Wen, who's with us down there today, uh, did is she did um, some marketing before the space opened where most contractors just put up black wrap over the windows. She put a giant photo of uh, Smilecraft coming soon. Here's our phone number. And they started taking calls and they had 
um, new patients lined up for their startup practice. So there's a lot of things throughout this process that we can help streamline and optimize so that that final step of opening is um, completely seamless. So uh, with that being said, I'd like to turn it over um, to Dr. Wen and uh, she can talk us through um, her story. Thank you, Matt, for inviting me here to speak today. And a lot of what you said just made me relive the entire experience over again. And it was just so wonderful. Um, and and I now that we've been open a year since this new practice opened, um, I'm definitely seeing the fruits of our labor. Um, if you can advance to the next slide, this is my office in Redwood City. Um, but before, I came from an office more designed like, or I've worked in lots of offices work that were designed with that open entry, more like the photo on the left. Lots of stuff on the counters, um, exposed. I, and then, so when I decided to design and plan my own, that's actually my office that you see in the photo on the right. Um, I got rid of all the clutter. Everything is in those upper cabinets with the doors open and when those are closed, it is super nice, super clean. I did it for myself personally, just for the looks and aesthetics. And I wanted patients to come into an office feeling like they were in a clean environment. Um, but I'm finding now in the time of COVID, it's actually um, really beneficial not to have stuff lying around that it's really hard to clean and disinfect in between patients with all the aerosols that are generated. Um, so on the next slide, Matt, if you don't mind, I wanna show you a 3D tour of my office here. And I'm located in Redwood City, California. This is, um, it's completely all the uh, chairs, cabinets, desk, all a uh, Serona cabinetry there. Um, all Serona equipment in every single one of the rooms here. You can see the treatment centers. And that's what it looks like on a daily basis, like nothing on the counter, um, just my cassette that will be sitting on the egg. But everything is kept curing light, um, disposables, everything is in the cabinet. Um, and my single entry operatory, they do have closed sliding doors, which also when closed, um, the HVAC will purify the air every five minutes in the room, which the patients also love. It's my CBCT. And then this is our sterilization area. Also, no clutter. All the um, wrapping paper for the cassettes are kept hidden in the drawers. All my um, clean cassettes and burrs, can pieces, all kept in those cabinets there. Even my Seric machine has its own cabinet, so it's not loud um, and it's keep, kept hidden away. Uh, same with the break room design. And uh, Matt, if you could advance to the next slide for me, please. And you can see um, from our Yelp reviews that although people do like me, they tend to talk a lot more about my office and the look and equipment. I mean, as soon as they step in the door, they're sold without even having met me. So, you know, once they see what they're walking into and realizing it's nothing like any other office they've ever been in, they know they want to stay at that office regardless of anything else. Um, and that's what everyone mentions. It's the first thing as soon as they step in the door. And first impressions, I would argue, do matter quite a bit. So it, 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 the, the look and design and equipment that you show and present to them, it all speaks for itself. And so um, once we go to the next slide, I just want to show you how some of the equipment that we selected does help improve our efficiencies as well. Um, so not only does it look great and high tech from the patient's point of view, it actually helps me as a practitioner be a lot more efficient in um, treatment planning, gaining treatment planning acceptance, um, sharing cases with specialists uh, and, and all that. So um, I have the um, Orthophos CBCT, I have the PrimeScan for my CEREC, and I have 
I had the MCXL uh, milling unit because the prime mill had not come out yet <laughs> at that time, but it still um, integrates very, very well together. Um, an example of a case that I had done with an anterior um, implant on tooth number nine, I had actually, before the tooth was extracted and the implant placed, I had actually scanned the patient with my prime scan, designed exactly where I wanted the restoration, took a CBCT of the area, sent both of those off to my um, periodontist so that he could look it over, and that way he could place the implant exactly where I wanted, and the crown was already designed and ready to be milled um, by the time the implant was placed. Just an example of being able to get and achieve an outcome that you want and have control from the beginning. Um, go ahead and advance to the next slide. So this is where we started. And then um, this is, machine is really great to the orthophos because I also have an in-house orthodontist and he uses the 3D uh, CBCT to take um, in place of a lateral set actually to work up all his Invisalign cases and, and ortho cases. So it's very, very functional. You can use it to locate um, canals if you're doing endo. And um, I also have to <laughs> tell you about the hidden cabinet behind the, um, the, the unit itself. That thing slides out and it hides all of your um, bite tabs, disposables in there. So again, very, very smart design by the Serona cabinetry. Um, I love it. <laughs> And please advance to the next slide, Matt. And so this is um, the prime scan. For those of you who haven't used a prime scan but are familiar with the previous versions like the Omnicam, I love it. The depth of field that you get on that camera, if I have any subgingival preps, it captures it and the margins are wonderful. It's such an easy scan. Most of the times I don't have to pack any cord because the depth of field on that camera is so good and it's so fast. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, and on the next slide, please. And this is that cabinet I was talking about. Um, so Serona makes this cabinet that's noise dampening. And that's what I wanted because I wanted when people walked through my office that it had a really calming feel because dentistry, a lot of people are already anxious about being at the dentist. And a lot of it has to do with memory, but it also has to do with sound that they remember. Um, so uh, one of the things I like is that this is actually noise dampening. So when that cover is closed, you can barely hear it, but you do get to see all the cool technology still at the same time. And then the drawers underneath it um, is where all my uh, pre-milled blocks are, are stored before they go in the machine. So also very, very uh, great organization tool as well. If you'll advance to the next slide for me, please, Matt. So um, that was just, you know, an example of how you can integrate all these technologies to make your workflow better. I touched a little bit on, you know, using the CBCT to locate all the canals for you when you do um, an endo, which is great. And then um, the treatment center itself actually has built in endo software in it. So whatever rotary file system you used, um, it can be uh, used directly on the chair without needing a separate endo handpiece, without having to bring in another apex locator because that's also integrated. It just saves a lot of time in setup, which means you, know, you can have more patients during the day. It also means um, you don't have to stock as many different types of uh, tools because everything is just right at your fingertips. Um, and so, especially nowadays when people want to limit their exposure and coming to the dental office because of concerns about COVID, the more same day dentistry you can do, the more they appreciate that. So with that CBCT, you could diagnose better that same day. Having those um, components available on the treatment center with all the hand pieces and software you need, it's, it's right there for you. You could, you know, set up quickly for a procedure that you had just diagnosed and treatment plan. Patients are so much happier, I find. And because they're already there, you know, they're not second guessing coming back for treatment or delaying it for like a year or two. So you're definitely also generating more case assessments and revenue in that sense. Um, please advance to the next slide for me, Matt. 
So with Synexus Imaging, we're able to show um, a whole story to a patient. So we can pull up the 3D image, a photo that we've taken, an intraoral photo, a PA, all at the same time. We're even able to scroll through the CBCT as we show them um, what's going on with, um, with their tooth. The other nice feature is that um, through the treatment centers, we're able to educate our patients about what they need. So I could discuss with this patient, um, sir, you need a root canal. And after your root canal, I'm gonna recommend that we do a crown for you. So we can go ahead and go right through our treatment center and um, go through to our media player and play a video about CEREC crowns. And it can show the patient the process in getting a crown. So it's been really um, vital to patient acceptance and patient education. Patients are very educated about what kind of dentistry we're putting out. And I feel like with that education, they're empowered to make proper decisions. And that was the lovely uh, Dr. Jenny Apekian at Midtown Dental in Sacramento, um, just showing you the integration of the Serona chair with the imaging software, Cydexis. And that's how you can pull your intraoral photos, um, 2D x-rays, 3D x-rays, implant planning equipment. You can pull all that together and really um, show and educate the patient right then and there. Um, I have the unit on the right, which is the Intego Pro, and I, it's the setup of the hand pieces on there is pretty much exactly what I have. Um, air water syringe, two electric hand pieces, um, a piezoelectric scaler, and the intraoral camera right on each uh, chair. That makes it easy to snap a photo and upload it onto that screen. Um, as soon as you grab that camera, you'll see the video, live video pop up on the screen so the patient can actually see you take photos of their tooth right there. Um, and like that video said, uh, you, you have the um, ability to put um, the CBCT up on the same screen side by side with the intraoral photos and to the x-ray so that they have all the information as you're talking them through your recommendations. Um, and I do love being able to upload my Spear Education videos onto there. These are um, only a handful of the options you can put on the chair. I do have the um, integrated endo handpiece with the apex locator. Um, you can actually put your um, CEREC scanner um, wand onto the chair instead of if you want one in each room and you're not rolling the cart around all the time. Um, it's, it's just been wonderful. And people who see it, they gasp and they and they just love it. And half the time, I'm not sure if they even remember my name, but they remember what my office looks like. And it's, it's definitely something they're happy to spread the word about. So um, I invite you all, if you're in the Northern California area, um, just let Matt know if you'd like a personal tour of the office and walk through everything yourself. But um, yeah, please, please come by. I'm in Redwood City and this is, um, this slide was just, um, I forgot to touch on this, I'm sorry, but um, I was talking earlier about the aerosols and this is just a study from the Journal of Hospital Infection that's saying, you know, um, with the aerosols when they're generated, it, it was more than we had previously thought that they actually do spread and encompass the whole room. So when you have a single um, entry operatory with a door that closes like mine, you're actually containing it uh, more and providing a safer environment for your patients and your team and yourself. So it's, it's definitely um, a design that I agree with. And I, like I said, I had done this just purely for aesthetic purposes and, and functionality. And now that this whole pandemic has happened, when patients see this and that they have their own private suite and that, you know, there's no open walls, they really can appreciate all that we've done and all the precautions we have taken um, in designing such a forward-thinking office. And a sneak peek of, again of the sterilization area as well. Very, very smartly designed cabinetry. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. T. Huang at Nari Dental, and she can tell you some more about all her um, designs Thanks, Dr. Nguyen. Um, I just wanted to say, I think you guys, you and I are very similar. 
Uh, it's my first time hearing you speak and hear about your practice. So I think you and I can be twins. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, and thanks, Matt, for the invite. I hesitated at first just because my practice wasn't ready. Uh, we had just moved in in February, but, you know, we pulled through because, you know, we've uh, developed a good relationship with Matt. And just a disclaimer, uh, my husband is a Henry Schein uh, equipment sales rep, so he's really good friends with Matt. And, you know, we've gotten to know him very well throughout this whole process. So when Matt asked me, I was like, you know, I really want to help out Matt because I love how passionate he is about uh, design and body efficiency. And that's what really sold me. Um, but if you can move on to the next slide. Oh, real quick. Sorry. Um, I forgot to update Matt. Um, I no longer teach at uh, the Donald School. Uh, I stopped about two years ago. So running two practices was um, a bit too much. <laughs> so yeah, I'm working full time um, as a uh, for two and two practices. So anyway, um, two years ago, uh, October, um, we went with Matt and my husband to the campus in Germany, and we were blown away by you know the facility, by the efficiency, and just the whole philosophy that they exuded and I brought my uh, lead hygienist, my assistant, because I wanted them involved in the whole building, the design and how we can create a, a, a better and faster and efficient and clean, clean practice. I had visited a few years prior the Fulton and Crane facility and the ADEC facility. So I have, you know, a nice comparison between all the three different companies and I was blown away by Serona. My husband, as I said, he's a equipment rep. So being married to a rep, every time he hears about a new product, he gets really excited about it. And I've learned to filter him out a lot. And he was pushing for me to visit Serona for probably a good six months, you know, and finally I came, I met with Matt and I was so impressed. So we planned a trip to uh, Germany to visit Serona. And if you can move on to the next slide and I'll walk you through the, my whole process. So my first practice, we started that in March, 2010. Uh, four operatories, uh, a little over 1300 square feet. You know, we learned how to, you know, move fast. We, it was a dual entry and you know, Steri was right in the middle between all four operatories and in every procedure, uh, assistants will always be getting up to grab something because they forgot to, to get something or I needed um, a disposable or, or a certain type of burr or, you know, a uh, polishing strip that's not in the operatory so they had to run and grab it. And, you know, it's just, we got tired. You know, we just didn't know any better. We just got used to it. And, you know, when I felt, when I knew that our lease was ending, and like Matt said earlier, if your lease is ending, plan on looking for a space or redesigning or moving two years before your lease ends, because that's what we did. Uh, two years prior is when we started searching for a new space to move into. It took us about six months. And by the time we signed our lease, it was, I think, December. So after seeing Serona in October, I already knew what, you know, what equipment I wanted. So designing that with the forefront of what I wanted, how I wanted my chairs, how I wanted my rooms, it helped me include the whole process or the whole um, build out with my end goal in mind already. Uh, Matt, if you can move on to the next slide. So this is my practice now. Uh, 12 operatories, 4,500 square feet. We weren't looking for a space that big, but it was a space that was available, was on the first floor um, with my sister in dental school and my son wanting to, did, to do dentistry. I was like, you know, we can go into it. We equipped uh, five Serona chairs and we just installed the sixth one recently, but between Last year and this year, with the whole efficiency at our forefront, we actually grew in production 24% from the previous year. 
And that's just because of how, if it, and I, I know you, I keep repeating efficiency, but it really is. Um, and, and that's so crucial. We, after we left Germany in October, I was so inspired with the design. I brought that home uh, wanting to start implementing. What Matt really talks about is the tubbing system and have everything in place. So it took us a whole year <laughs> to, to start, you know, gathering ideas and um, putting everything in place. And I ran some numbers yesterday. One of my assistants uh, between 2018 and 2019, she worked 150 hours less and ended up making more because of bonus, but she was so much happier and better work life, you know, better uh, quality of life. And she's not as burnt out, but 150 hours, that's like a whole month's worth of hours that she worked less last year because of the inspiration that I received from Serona. Um, Matt, if you can move on to the next slide. So the reason why I brought my assistant and my hygienist is because I wanted them invested into my vision and my goal. And this is what my hygienist put together. So this is one of my operatories. This is the Integral Pro. And we wanted, you know, once our room is broken down, cleaned, uh, sanitized, we want everything to be in its place. So every time we come in, the assistant comes in to set up, everything is exactly where it should be. So if I were to sit down or grab a chair, I know exactly where my chair is. If I were to sit down, I know where my light is instead of having to walk up and grab my light. The monitor is in a certain position, the um, assistant chair is in a, in a certain position, the egg has to be in a certain position. So I can close my eyes and sit down and know where everything is. And same goes for my assistants. You know, all our drawers have the exact same setup in between, you know, and all, in the future, all 12 operatories. So there's no open up drawers looking for things. And you can't really tell here, but it's a, a, a side entry. When Matt and my husband Gary was helping design the practice, I was really adamant on a dual entry because that's all I knew. You know, uh, it being an associate and my two other practices, that's all I knew. And my concern was, well, how do assistants get out? And like Matt said, there's, there's still a lot of room. You know, you may feel like it's a small space, but there's plenty of room to walk around. And, you know, because now the assistants know that there's only one entry, we've actually been planning ahead and they've actually only, I don't think they've had to step out as much as our old practice where they were waking up like five times in a procedure. Now it's only if it's an emergency, like if there's really something that I need, which is rare, that's not in the drawer or in the tub. So with the mindset of going in, they're preparing ahead of time. Uh, Matt, if you can advance to the next slide, that would be great. So like Matt mentioned earlier, I have a three-sided stereo. So if you look on the left image, um, the leftmost image, there's the dirty side and then there's the clean side. So on the clean side, uh, Matt, if you can show where that computer is, we converted that, uh, the other one, there. We converted that into our hygiene setup station there. And if you see in the cabinets, my assistant set up for the whole entire day uh, for each patient. So we do a little um, dry erase marker. So we have patient's name or initials. We really write down if they need x-rays or not. So it's really grab and go. You know, the bib setup, everything that we need for that patient for that appointment, it's all there. So we don't set up in the operatory. We don't set up as patient gets in. It's literally grab and go. And then same thing for restorative. We have everything set up for the day. And the cabinet on the right is all our disposables, all our tubs, our, let's see, we do have an old, oh, our laser is in there too. So everything is stored in those three cabinets right there. 
and our disposables are all those drawers right underneath the computer. And yeah, that's pretty much it for our scary. So this, um, this side here then, this is basically the distribution throughout the office of all instruments and bills. Yeah. Yeah, so we use that. Um, I started blocking out an hour um, at the end of the day on Friday. So we cut our patient hours uh, short on Friday. So the team can uh, restock the tubs, restock the operatories. And that's our, yeah, that's our station right there. Yes, the tubs are refilled here. So instead of, mm -hmm. you guys don't store, like let's say composite in every single operatory, right? Because now you have six ops, shade A4 in that many places would probably be a point, right? So yeah, having and, yeah, we store all the tubs because you know, we're yeah. in the risk of expiring, <laughs> having expired um, bond and composite. And just over the years, I've you know learned to not have so many different types of materials. I really narrow it down to what works for me, and I'm very lean on my products that I use. Yeah, and it looks like you have your schedule is up on this monitor here. Yes. What's going? We had no idea what we like were missing out on. Center. Huh? <laughs> I said it's like your control center right here. So you've got your whole schedule and then you can uh, dissipate everything from there so anyone that's there knows what's happening anywhere in the practice yes because any given day our schedule is dynamic you know even if we have a schedule a patient scheduled in one operatory you know it, it moves <laughs> so it's it's nice to have the computer there at first we were like no we don't need a computer we can print out the schedule but that computer there saved us so much time yeah that's great yeah um, but I, and I do have to add, uh, I'm predominantly a PPO practice uh, in Fremont, California, where most of our patients are from Google, Tesla, you know, um, Apple. So everyone's very insurance conscious, you know, minimizing their out-of-pocket expense. And, you know, with insurance these days, they're trying to cut down on reimbursements. So, you know, where does that leave us providers? Because our overhead keeps going up. And how do we, you know, make up for that is being more efficient, you know, saving yeah. time and how much time, you know, we, we set up and how much preparation time. So, you know, our appointment for each patient is shortened because we see so much time from um, setting up, from cleaning up, from, you know, seeing the next patient. So I'm able to move, you know, jump from one uh, patient to another. And given, you know, COVID, you know, we were all worried about that. And I can't imagine being in my old practice with four operatories, you know, uh, revenue would go down because I had to leave 15 minutes in between each operatory. So having that space definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to give a shout out to my team. This is my team. They've been supporting my vision for the past 10 years and we, we grew and, you know, I'm here where I am today because of them. So like same with uh, Dr. Nguyen, if you guys ever want to come, you know, uh, tour the practice, I'm here, um, set something up and hopefully we'll all get past uh, this COVID time. Excellent, thank, thank you so much. So let's go, um, let's open it up for uh, Q&A. Okay, so feel free to ask some questions in there, but we we have a few questions in there now. So um, what sort of design and efficiencies um, and guidance did Denseply Serona provide? Like what was our role versus um, Henry Schein versus, and what, you know, we kind of each have our own lanes. So what would you, uh, what would you guys say was was helpful there? Matt had right hand the whole process. So very, very, very involved. Um, he's still involved, even you know, we're up and going. We have two new associates who just started, so they didn't get the, all the training that you know that I received or my assistants. So Matt was there, you know, he did um, 
what, what did you guys try? You guys try to FaceTime call or a Zoom call? I wasn't there, but yeah, Matt spent a good two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, as yeah. Uh, as you've added new team members and things like that, you know, the that's kind of one of the roles I play is providing training and support for the team as they're learning all these new systems. And as your business expands and you add assistants and associates and and things like that, it's super important. Um, Doctor Wen, I have a question for you. What was your um, what was your biggest thing that you you might do differently now that you're you're looking back on um, building a your second practice? Um, I would not do anything differently in the back. I love the treatment centers um, exactly as they are. I would do something different with my front office design. I would. Um, expand it actually because right now I can only seat two at the front I would probably add a third just because of all the volume we're getting plus we wanting to social distance more with the um, pandemic that's going on um, but actually now after seeing Dr. Huang's uh, three-sided Siri Center I'm loving that <laughs> it's amazing I, yeah it's, I love it so I would yeah. I would very much like to do something like that yeah, that's good. What, what about you, um, Dr. T? What uh, What do you think? Um, the I, I'm the same with Dr. Nguyen. Yeah, like the, the front the front office design. You know, I was so focused on the clinical aspect that my front office was an afterthought. So, you know, we're very efficient in the back, but you know, my my admin. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, you know, especially with all these is. questionnaires. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's one other question in the Q&A. Um, this um, maybe Dr. Wen, I think, could be uh, one for you. Well, I don't know, both of you, but we'll start with Dr. Wen. Um, how, how long did it take you to transition to this single entry? Because this, for you, it came a little bit late in the game. So uh, maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah. Um... So before, I, I had already had a different architect and design, um, you know, given by other people before I was even put in touch with Serona and Henry Schein. And my office being, you know, over 2,200 2, square feet, I, in my head, thought that I could fit way more ops than they were showing me in the design. So one of the things Matt spoke about was by transitioning from open bays or dual entries to single entry, you can fit another op, which is more productive space, which um, when I switched designers and, um, and suppliers late in the game, I learned that and that's what sold me and that's what caused me to make the switch. And so now I, in, in something that was previously designed for six ops, I now was able to fit eight, which is a huge difference. So, you yeah, know, mom, eight ops, that's a lot that. of production. That's a lot more daily production. And it, it's just been amazing. Um, I do like that everything has its own place in the cabinet. So, like you said, those, those, for those who are worried about their assistant having to get up and grab something, that's a lot of lost time while you're waiting for that something your assistant to come back with. But when you have any, everything that you need in the tubs, in the cabinets, in the drawers, in the room, you don't need that second entry because your assistant is there with you the entire time. There are no surprises because you're all set up for everything you need. And that's how you squeeze in that extra patient and extra production. Yeah, that's, that's the heart of efficiency right there for sure. So, um, Dr. Huang, what, um, what do you think is your um, favorite thing about single entry? Is it privacy? Is it um, the COVID and aerosols? Or Because I think this is one of the big, you know, this is about design trends and patient experience. And how has that impacted the patient experience? Uh, very similar to Dr. Dr. Nguyen, you know, it's with COVID, it, it definitely helped, you know, for 
patient uh, comfort, our team, you know, to know that we, everything is, you know, contained. Um, but, you know, it's, for me, it's not just, you know, our, our patients, because our team are so happy. They love our design. They love the layout, you know, how efficient everything is. It shows, you know, and yeah, we have patients who come in and comment about how they love our practice because they've seen what our practice, where we came from. So seeing the new space, you know, there's always a wow. They're always impressed. But what really touches upon me is they notice how happy the team is. Yeah. and how well we work together because you know you know going walking in and out everything is everyone is they understand each other they they know who's needed where without having to communicate and, and that's the other thing is we have to communicate less because we know where everything is we know where things go and what we need to set up um but you know really back to your question about the that single entry i feel like you know my, my workspace is smaller. I feel like I'm having to, to reach less or trying to find to, to fidget and, you know, just like the, the, the amount of time I save from having to look for something, it, it, it adds up so that yes, we can see another patient. I can squeeze in another patient. Uh, and what's nice is we can do same day dentistry from recall patients, you know, who needs a, a simple occlusal or a class five or, you know, a, a class two, I'm able to go in. You know, my hygienist gets them numb, you know, by the time I'm finished with one patient, my patient, I just hop over and, and start treating them and, and drilling. And they're out within like 30 minutes. So their appointment time is not increased by that much. Whereas if we had to bring them back, that's another hour, hour 15. Whereas I just, you know, extended their stay for another 30 minutes. So I saved 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, we had one more question pop in, and this one I think is really important because, and I find when we're laying out offices, um, from our standpoint, the laboratory is changing a lot in dentistry right now. So somebody's asking, um, do you guys have laboratories? And um, most offices do, but I see the days of pouring stone models and um, doing the traditional kind of messy wet lab work is eventually going to go away and transition to 3D printing. Um, it's not fully there yet, but what, um, Dr. Wong, since you're, you're on right now, what do you, what do you think, um, what do you do in your practice and what do you see the future being with all this technology you have? I agree with you 100%. Um, I just saw my assistant uh, work on uh, whitening trays the other day and she used um, a 3d printed lab because uh, we had a, a night guard made and she used that 3d printed model to make the the whitening trays so that was very efficient i walked in i was i was impressed because i didn't think that she could have done that yeah uh, but yeah. less mess you know yeah less mess and um I think that technology is driving that way. So all the attendees on here that are maybe considering floor plans and things like that, um, you, you may not need as much space in the lab, but it's gonna be completely different space. The, the traditional wet lab is going away, but it's not quite gone yet. I'm, sh I'm sure you guys are still pouring some stone models and, and things like this, but um, it's definitely a, a design consideration. Um, and the other part of that question was, does this provide um, more efficiency? And I think for, for sure the answer to that is yes, because you know when you have this digital workflow in the office and you have um, CEREC and you have 3D, um, now you can plan clear liners with the Densply Serona Sure Smile system from root to crown with the cone beam and the, and the root of the tooth all the way to the, the um, intraoral surfaces. And so all of this technology is, is continuing to advance so quickly. And, um, but even today, those procedures are, are much faster and more efficient. So the lab is gonna continue to be a critical part, but I see it heading much more toward uh, the digital route. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, with that being said, I think we're all out of questions and we're right up on um, an hour. And so um, I just wanna thank um, Dr. Wong and Dr. Wen uh, so much for being on here. Thank you very much to Henry Schein. And um, please uh, contact them if uh, you wanna get more information or get in touch with uh, any of us to help with your project. Thank you so much for having me Thanks, on today. Matt. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay, take care.